So as you all know, Brett Baer hosted a town hall with Bernie Sanders, but a couple of days later, he hosted... I guess you can call it a mini town hall, if you will, with Tulsi Gabbard, although it's not technically a town hall if nobody is there from the audience asking questions. But for the most part, he spent 12 minutes talking to Tulsi Gabbard. And I think that this demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt that Tulsi Gabbard is a phenomenal interviewer because her and Bernie Sanders do the exact same thing that I want progressives to do. They stay so married to the policy substance that you can't really get them to pivot away from that. So anytime they're asked bullshit questions, they'll either answer it quickly or brush it off and then move on straight to the policy substance. And Tulsi Gabbard did that. And I think that, you know, as I see her on all of these mainstream news programs, be it Colbert or The View, she keeps staying glued to the policy. I want to extract out this one portion from this interview where it's very clear that Brett Bayer is trying to goad her into attacking Bernie Sanders, but she doesn't take the bait. And she does what progressives do best. She pivoted to the policy substance. Take a look. All right, I want to turn to politics. You're in a race where there could be more than 20 other candidates. In 2016, you endorsed wholeheartedly Bernie Sanders. Why are you running against him now? I'm not running against him or anyone else. I'm running to serve the American people, to serve them as president and commander in chief, bringing the experience that I have serving for 16 years now in the Army National Guard as a soldier, deploying twice to the Middle East, serving in Congress for over six years on the armed services and foreign affairs committees, bringing this experience to this most important job that the president has as commander in chief and change the priorities in our country to bring about an end to these regime change wars, this new Cold War that we are in with ever escalating tensions yeah. between the United States and other nuclear armed countries like Russia and China and this nuclear arms race and bring the trillions of dollars that we're spending on these wars and these weapons and bring it back into the pockets of the American people. Bring yeah. it back to invest in serving the very real needs that we have in this country. You know, in the 2016 DNC convention, you said that Bernie was the voice for millions and that you were truly honored to endorse him. So what happened between then and now? Once again, I announced my candidacy long before Bernie Sanders announced his run. I am not running against him or any other candidate in this country. I am running for the American people. Sure, but you I say that you're better than him. To serve the American people, serving the American people as president and commander in chief, and the unique experiences that I just outlined are what okay. I bring to the forefront and make me best qualified to serve as commander in chief. So, two times he basically tried to get her to if not attack Bernie, just say something critical of him as to why she's better because there's this underlying implication that if you're running against someone, then obviously you think that you're better than them. But I actually reject that notion because just because you're running against someone, that doesn't necessarily imply that you think you're better than them. So I think that this competition between progressives running in 2016, it actually is healthy. I am worried to a degree about progressives splitting the vote. But at the end of the day, if you ask me, do I think Tulsi Gabbard should step aside for Bernie Sanders since she endorsed him in 2016? Hell no. Because I don't like this idea. and I, I unequivocally reject this idea that people who were Bernie's allies should step aside for him. Because we'd be doing the same thing that we accused Hillary Clinton allies of doing. Nobody wanted to challenge Hillary Clinton in 2016. Nobody was brave enough in the establishment, people who clearly wanted to run for president, Cory Booker, Kirsten Gillibrand, but they didn't. So the difference with progressives is that we actually encourage competition. We encourage democracy. And I absolutely don't think Tulsi Gabbard should step aside. Um, and again, I don't want to straw man Brett Bayer because I don't necessarily think that that's what he was trying to overtly communicate to people. But certainly there is this underlying thing that maybe he's trying to draw out of you. And even if it's subconscious, I think it's harmful. I think that Tulsi Gabbard running for president, even if overall I support Bernie Sanders more, it really is important because I really do see both of these individuals, Bernie and Tulsi, on the same ticket. I really do see that being a very um, high probability. And this is why I'm glad that Tulsi, Bernie, and Warren, among themselves, they're keeping it civilized because there is 
a very real prospect of these individuals collaborating. Now, what's great is that Bernie and Tulsi, even if they are not perfect, they both have weaknesses that are kind of fixed by the other person's strengths. So, for example, they're both great on Medicare for All. Bernie Sanders is better because he does say we should get rid of private health insurance. But Tulsi Gabbard is still good, and she's one of two people that have not backtracked and said, well, you know, I support a path to Medicare for All, such as a public option. But with that being said, on Venezuela, Bernie Sanders just has not been as strong on this as Tulsi Gabbard. You've got to give her credit where it's due. Julian Assange, Tulsi Gabbard has been stronger here. But then again, when it comes to universal programs in America and redistributive policies, Bernie talks about it more. Tulsi does not. So do you kind of see what I'm getting at? Where one is weak, the other kind of fills in that gap and they make almost this perfect duo. And what I do like about Tulsi Gabbard, which really makes me feel as if she'd be a phenomenal VP choice, is that she has so much political courage. She does not care about the political ramifications. She doesn't care if doing something poses a threat to her career. She's trying to do things that she thinks will help the country. So if she wins the nomination or Bernie wins the nomination or Elizabeth Warren wins the nomination, I think there's a very real likelihood that we're going to see a collaboration between two of these three progressives. And this is why I don't think that they should attack each other. Um, and really, I don't think you should be overly aggressive in general. But um, if Bernie's going to get attacked, if Tulsi's going to get attacked, then I think it's reasonable to assume that they should counterpunch. Now, with that being said, I want to go to one more clip here um, where Brett Bayer asks her, I think, a pretty reasonable question about the DNC. And seeing that she resigned in 2016, um, I think she has a very valuable take on this. Last thing, are you satisfied with the new leadership at the DNC? Last time you quit the race because you said the DNC was putting the finger on the scale against Bernie Sanders specifically, but are you convinced that someone like you can operate in this DNC environment? Uh, well, two, two things. To be clear, I, I stepped down as vice chair of the DNC at that time in 2016 because I saw some very stark differences between the two major candidates in that race at that time. Secretary Clinton, who had a very hawkish interventionist foreign policy, and Bernie Sanders, who was largely the opposite of that, a more non-interventionist foreign like policy. And as a veteran and, and someone who has seen the cost of war, I felt it was important to be able to step down and make that endorsement to be able to bring these issues to the forefront. Obviously, now there's been a lot that we have learned about what went on in the DNC at that time. I think there's a lot more transparency and some important changes that have been made. But there are many of us who are going to continue to keep watching to make sure that this process is fair uh, and transparent and that the wishes of the voters are what are carried through and will decide this election. So once again, she immediately pivoted to the policy substance. Her and Bernie, they're just cut from the same cloth. Um, and they'd make a fantastic team. Now, the question is, where does Elizabeth Warren stand? Because to me, I feel like the two people that stand out the most in my mind are Bernie and Tulsi. However, I honestly feel like Elizabeth Warren has been doing phenomenal at proposing very important policies that really would reshape America's economy, make it more equitable. The problem is Medicare for all. She's so strong on pretty much everything with the exception of Medicare for all. Everyone notices that she's walking away from Medicare for all. And, you know, for me, I've been very clear, Medicare for all, if you don't support it, that's a deal breaker for me. So I... I like what Elizabeth Warren is doing. Um, she's proposing a lot of very bold, ambitious policies, but the Medicare for all thing is so frustrating. And she really is at the opposite end of the spectrum when you compare her to Tul Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard has 100%, you know, um, political courage. That attribute is maxed out. She went to Standing Rock. She endorsed Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren did not go to Standing Rock. She did not endorse Bernie Sanders. So she has great ideas, but I don't know that she has the political courage necessary to get anything accomplished. Whereas Tulsi Gabbard, I feel like she would get in there and calmly crack skulls if she needs to. She would be a phenomenal attack dog for Bernie and vice versa. So more and more as we see these candidates 
I'm leaning more towards a Tulsi Bernie ticket with Bernie at the top of that ticket and Tulsi as VP. But at the same time, I would be okay with Warren, you know, replacing one of those two individuals. But I do think that Bernie is still my number one bet. But I I think that really to bring it back to this clip here and the interview, Tulsi has the right idea. And I think that Bernie and Elizabeth Warren are on the same page since they all met before the primary. And they agreed really, um, it seems like to keep it civil, which is intelligent because if you choose to work with someone in the future, if one of you win, you don't want to bring them down. Now, I think that as political commentators, we do have a duty to critique these candidates and draw out their weaknesses. And I think that this is especially important because constructive criticism can improve candidates. And with people like Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders, they do listen. So I've never bit my tongue if I see something Bernie Sanders said or Tulsi Gabbard or Elizabeth Warren said that I disagreed with because these individuals actually listen to constructive criticism and feedback. So I'll leave that there. Um, Great job by Tulsi Gabbard. She is really a charismatic speaker and I'm, I'm loving everything that she's saying lately. She's doing a phenomenal job. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.